Welcome back to the Big Tire Garage and another one of our Q&A sessions from here inside the shop. As you know by now, ask a question, I answer it. If I choose your question, you send me your mailing address. I drop a sticker pack out to you in the mail. So let's get started with some questions. First question comes from Daniel Hera, 9984. Daniel asks, if you were going to build a budget rig for the all-in-one trail ride overland and hardcore-ish, that's a very important-ish, wheeling rig, what would it be? Keeping the stock frame and body, but picking the suspension, drivetrain combo, family friendly, lots of miles per hour. I'd like to start on the right foot to get the most for the time and money invested. Okay, so Daniel, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a couple options here. So option A is gonna be uh, that you're gonna buy a vehicle that is either brand new or fairly new, finance it, and then take whatever money you have, put it in some upgraded suspension parts, and then you can go four wheel on. And then option B is gonna be buying a used vehicle uh, and then uh, basically putting more money into the upgrades that you put into that vehicle. Um, I know that what I wanna tell you is to just, you know, buy some rectangular tubing and build a custom chassis and build a vehicle like my Colorado. Uh, but I understand that not everyone has either the time the skills, the tools, the space to basically build a vehicle literally from scratch and from a $500 cab that someone threw away. I get that. So I'm approaching this a little bit differently. This isn't necessarily what I would build, but I'm going to give you my advice uh, from what I think will work very well for, your, uh, for you and your family. Uh, so I'm going to imagine that this is a vehicle that you need to fit yourself and your spouse uh, or a friend, uh, a couple kids in the back, maybe a dog, uh, room for gear, and still be able to drive to and from the trail. Uh, you said hardcore-ish, so I'm gonna assume you're not trailering this. So this is gonna be something you wanna drive on the road. So if you wanna just buy a vehicle out of the gate that's very capable, uh, and then modify it with just a few items, you're gonna, in my opinion, wanna look at a Jeep JL. Now, some people might say Bronco. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say no to the Bronco. And the reason I'm gonna say no to the Bronco is because I think the Bronco's too new. Um, I think it still has some growing pains to get over, especially with the vehicle and the parts that you can get for it. Um, I think that they are, they need to be sorted out a little bit. Uh, I think you can modify them, great. It's a little bit more expensive. And that's why I'm gonna say not the Bronco. If you're gonna spend a lot of money on a vehicle, I think you wanna have to put as little money into it to get it to the position that you want. The Bronco is great. I took that Bronco, built that one that I did on four-wheeler, put that Icon suspension system in it at stage seven. It was amazing. But I honestly took a $50,000 truck and probably put another $25,000 into it to make it great. I'm talking about taking like a $50,000 truck and putting like maybe five grand into it. So that's where we're gonna go. So Jeep JL, very good vehicle. Um, nice modern amenities inside of it. You can drive it every day. You have a few engine options to choose from. You got a diesel, you got a uh, four cylinder turbo, and then you have a V6. Uh, you can choose a manual or an automatic. All those choices are personal preference. That's not gonna change the vehicle. Uh, you can choose the Rubicon if you want. If you can get a, a good deal on a Rubicon, absolutely go for it. Because with the Rubicon, you're gonna get uh, a little bit better transfer case and, and, and lockers and the axles, which are great. So let's say you get a Rubicon Jeep JL. At that point in time, uh, modifications to it that I would do to it, very minimal. I think maybe uh, some bumpers uh, just to get a little bit more approach and departure angle and also be able to get a winch on it. So that's the first thing you wanna do. Uh, you might wanna step up a tire, maybe to a 35 or a 37. I'm gonna assume because you said hardcore-ish, we're not talking about tons and 40s here. So, and that would be where I'd stop. Aside from that, it would be everything else just to make that vehicle more comfortable for you to use how you plan to use it. If it's a camping rig, you know, build out the back of it with maybe like some, something to make camping a little bit easier, maybe some type of outdoor kitchen or something that makes your life less simpler, a cooler or a fridge or something along those lines. That's gonna be where you're gonna go into that vehicle at, as I said before, let's say you finance 50 grand or something, get a monthly payment uh, going, and then you are basically put maybe five, 10 grand into it, and then you've got a vehicle that's very capable off-road, and then at the same time, you'll still be able to drive it every day. So that's option A, that's one. So option two is gonna be, maybe you wanna put a little bit more money into the vehicle to customize it a little bit more, 
Uh, but you still want, as I said, you, spouse or a friend, room for the kids, maybe a dog, certainly not a cat, maybe a cat, I don't know. So in that case, but you have more money for modifications that you want to do to it. In that case, I would say get yourself a Jeep JK. So buy a four-door JK, um, you know, if you can find a really good deal on one. Now this is, this is going to be the build where you spend a very little bit of money, a lot less money on the vehicle itself, but you're going to do a lot of modifications to it. So Jeep JK, that'd be step one. Uh, the chassis are great on the JKs, uh, huge aftermarket support. If you're looking for a bolt-on suspension system, you cannot go wrong with a metal cloak suspension for any Jeep. They really have those sorted out. So if you want to do some type of metal cloak suspension system on it, that would be great. Um, lots of skid plate options, get some skid plates underneath that thing. And then plan for the tons and like do, a, do an axle swap, plan for an axle swap. You can get there's a lot of aftermarket axles out there from companies like Dynatrack or even straight from Dana that will bolt right in to your Jeep using all that factory suspension. So no custom suspension required, but then you get the, the, you get the new one tons, you get the strength of the tons, and then you can do things like you know 40s and winch bumper and fenders and all that kind of stuff. And then if you have a little bit of money left over and you want to drop like 10, 15 grand in it, then you can eventually plan some type of engine swap. The V6s and the JKs, they're okay, they're not great, um, certainly not as good as the modern JL stuff, uh, and so in the long run, you're probably going to want to think about, you know what, eventually uh, maybe I'll put an LS in this thing if it's legal for your state, if not, you can come up with some type of hemi swap, which is 50 state legal now, thank you Jeep for building the 392. Um, so that would be where I would go. So those are your two options. I would say Jeep JL, financed, maybe five, ten grand worth of stuff to make it fun, and you can still drive it every day. JK, you can also still drive that every day, even after you do the, the tons and 40s and, and uh, LS swap, all that kind of jazz. But at the end of the day, you're still gonna have a vehicle that's capable and, and usable. And as I said, you can drive it every day, even after you do the V8 swap, you'd actually be surprised. Um, so those would be where I would go if I was looking for a vehicle to match all the criteria, criteria that you have in here. Um, now, for me, <laughs> Uh, I would absolutely build something from scratch, but I also understand that that's not necessarily what everyone is able to do. So I would never shy away from those two platforms, the JK and the JL. If you're looking for either your first vehicle or something that's going to meet all these criteria that you mentioned, that is a great platform to go from. So hopefully I got you headed in the right direction. Uh, uh, good luck. Let us know what you buy and uh, make sure you send me uh, your mailing address so I can get that sticker pack out to you. Here we go. Here we go. Next question is from Family Hunter Guy. Keep up the awesome content. Thank you, I will. You build all this awesome stuff and get to do so many awesome adventures. Do you wheel with your family? If not, what vacations do you take? Finally, what's your favorite bourbon? Man, there's a lot of questions in there. Okay, so let's go. Do I wheel with my family? Yes, I do wheel with my family. Uh, now that my son is grown, he's 21, he's just finishing college. Um, we don't go as often as we used to when he was younger. We used to take trips locally out to our local off-road park, uh, but we don't do that as much. Um, he does come on some of the bigger trips and all that kind of stuff. Um, my wife used to come when he came. We used to go out, we had a four-seat crawler. We used to take it all the time, and uh, we had lots of fun with that. My wife still comes occasionally. She doesn't like the crazy, hardcore, rock bouncery and or Ultra 4 stuff. She prefers just, you know, as my good buddy Miles Hasselquist would say, she likes leaf peeping. So she likes, you know, gentle country roads, overlanding type stuff without the camping. Um, what vacations do we take? Man, we take vacations all the time. Um, I would say probably our favorite place to go. Uh, we go a lot. Uh, um, we've gone to Europe a few times. I've been to Europe many times as a kid. My wife and I have gone a few times. We're heading back there this year with our son as he graduates uh, university. So he's done at the university. He's graduated. He's already got a job. So before he starts, we're all going up there. And I'm going to stop in Iceland and we're going to do some off-roading while we're in Iceland. And so that would be the next sort of family trip that we plan to take. And then what's my favorite bourbon? Man, in all honesty, I like a lot of bourbons, so I don't have a, a single particular favorite. I like them all. I would say right now probably, uh, it depends on the time of year. So in the winter time, I like to drink rye. I like to get a little bit of rye. Uh, I find it spicier, I find it hotter, and it kind of warms you up inside. Uh, so that would be where I'm at in the winter. 
Uh, bourbon wise, man, I don't know. I don't have a particular single favorite. I like to, to see what other people's favorites are and then, and then try those, to be honest with you. So I like to have other people introduce me to their bourbons. Uh, my go-to drink, as I've said many times, is honestly Chat 111, Chattanooga Whiskey 111. It's probably one of my favorite, just like sit down, sip, and drink it. Um, and then I have some old H. Clark stuff that I like to drink. Unfortunately, he's not making it anymore, so that's getting harder to find. Uh, but those would be my two, uh, like every day. Uh, not that I drink every day, but you know, like once a week, that's, that's what I'm going for is that Chat Whiskey 111. So thank you for your questions. Hopefully I answered them. And uh, make sure you send me your address get a sticker pack out for the air or from there uh let's see here next question uh ba -da -ba -da -ba. Ooh, this is kind of a fun one this one is from richard freeman 4295 dave's maz grande or fred's clampy truck and if you were to quote join the fight what are you bringing oh that's tough um wow Okay, so for those of you who don't know, what he's referring to is uh, Dave Chappelle. Uh, he, uh, him and Fred did a show called Dirt Every Day. Now they both have YouTube channels, so Dave's is the Dirt Head Shed. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, Fred's is 4 by Fred. I'll put a link in the description below. below. Uh, they recently took uh, those two trucks. Those are two iconic trucks for those two guys. So Dave's Maz Grande was this Mazda that he built, and uh, I think he left the Mazda power plant in it and just did uh, you know, a, a Toyota transmission transfer case conversion kind of thing, which was pretty cool. And then he's got a, uh, I think it's got two transfer cases in it, did tons on it. I think it's got Dana 70s with like seven to one gears, something like that. Uh, Fred's Clampy, that's old Yoda. It's got all those standard Toyota things with like 900 shifters in it and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's, I think it's still sitting, no, it might be on one tons, can't remember. Anyway. Those are two iconic trucks for those guys because they've had them forever and they've taken them wheel in a bunch. Um, which one would I choose? Uh, I don't know if you're asking me that question. Um, I would choose, I love Dave's Maz Grande. I think it's super cool. If I had to pick between the two trucks, I would choose Dave's uh, Mazda because I think it's super cool. I saw he had it on Ultimate Adventure and it's just a cool, clean little truck and I really, really like it. Um, what am I bringing to the fight? Man, it's simple. If I had to bring a truck uh, to basically compete with those two guys or wheel with those two guys in a similar style truck, it's gonna have to be my Gomanche. As soon as the Gomanche's done, that would be the perfect truck to take with those guys because it's a similar style truck. You know, it's a small little single cab pickup truck, uh, low center of gravity, nothing crazy. Like I could easily say, oh, I'll take my Goat Build LJ or my Bomber Fab Car, but that's just kind of cheating, right? That's like saying, I'll bring an atomic bomb to your knife fight. That's just not fair. So I would have to say it's gonna be the Gomanche. That'd be kind of a cool thing to do. We should, I should talk to Fred and Dave about that. We should do some kind of like mini trucking trail ride thing with those three trucks. That could be kind of fun. Maybe we'll do that. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see us do something like that in the future. So there you go, yes, if I had to pick one, it's gonna be Dave's Mazda, and if I'm bringing a truck to wheel with those two guys, it's gonna be my Comanche. Thanks for your question. Don't forget to send me your mailing address. Here we go, next question. Hey Ian, oh sorry. This is from Nicholas Glover 155 Hey Ian, I'm working on building my first Jeep. 2007 JKU with Dana 60 front and Sterling in the rear. I would like to build my own drive shafts to stay budget friendly, have you ever had any experience with this? Okay, so this is probably gonna be the first time I've ever said this on a video. Don't do that. Don't build your own drive shafts. Do not build that part. No, sir, no. In no situation whatsoever should you build a drive shaft for that rig. Now, saying that, on my bomber car, I used some drive shaft kits from Wide Open Designs. Now that's very, very different. Those are thick wall DOM. This is a trail only rig. It's a two buggy. It's never gonna see highway speeds. It's basically a rock crawler. Maybe see a little bit of wheel speed when we're doing some hill climbing stuff. But that's very different than a Jeep JKU that may be driven on the street. It is absolutely not worth your time, effort, or safety to build your own drive shafts. If it's a trail only rig uh, and it's a front shaft, you know, there was, a, years ago we used to build square drive shafts, believe it or not, we'd use receiver tubing and we'd put them in there. 
But those were for vehicles that only ever saw uh, trails, and that's it. And and rock, and that was back when we just rock crawled. We didn't go fast, right? That was just a rock crawling vehicle. It never went over like 15 miles per hour, even on its way to the trail. So uh, don't build drone drive shafts for a vehicle like a JKU. Uh, number one, that rear shaft is so long. The wheelbase on that truck is 116 inches. That rear shaft's probably going to end up being, I don't know, two, two, three feet long maybe two and a half feet long. Let's say it's two and a half feet long. You build your own shaft, uh, the weight of that shaft is gonna cause it to what's called jump rope, which means the shaft's gonna start basically bending in the middle as it's, as it's spinning. Um, if it's not balanced properly, it can vibrate. If it, if it vibrates too much, it can wipe out your pinion bearing or it can actually do damage to the transfer case. If it vibrates too much, it can actually start to come apart. Uh, you don't want that to happen. Not to mention the fact that on the JKU, well, if you do the Dana 60s, I guess you've got free will and hubs, so you can disconnect the front, but also I'll give you that. So maybe the front drive shaft uh, you might be okay with, but my personal opinion would be it's not worth it. Don't build your own drive shafts. Uh, get a hold of a company like JE Real Drive Line. They specialize in drive shafts for off-road vehicles. He will be able to talk you through what is the right drive shaft to build, uh, you know, what material you should make it out of. It'll come balanced and really, when you're honest with yourself, by the time you buy all the material and the parts and the time to build that shaft, you're honestly not saving that much money. You really aren't. Do yourself a favor, get a shaft built for your project. You'll thank me in the end. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I didn't have a better answer for you, but that's just what I'm gonna say. So now it's time for our where is it now segment. Now I'm gonna need your help with this. Uh, when we get to the end of this section, I'm gonna ask you guys for a little bit of assistance. So stick around to the very end of the video so you can figure this out. Uh, Cause I need to address something that's been brought up in the comments about how many vehicles I have to actually talk about where are they now. But today's where is it now is going to be about the Scout 800A. Now the Scout 800A was a project that I did on my old TV show. It was a 1968 Scout that originally I had gotten from somebody who basically sent me a message through Pirate 4x4, that'll show you how long ago this was, uh, that said that they had just found a rust-free Scout 800A and did I want it for a build. I said there's no way they found a Scout 800A with zero rust. They sent me a bunch of pictures and the truck actually had an incredibly small pinhole rust a rust hole in the floor and that was it. The rest of the truck was in amazing condition. And so I bought it right away. Had them bring it down and we buy it, we build it on the show. Um, we took that truck and then I found another Scout 2 to be the donor because that Scout 800A was a four cylinder truck. We did a, we took the Scout 2 and we removed all the International Harvester drivetrain to use on the Scout. So we removed the rear axle and the front axle um, actually, I take that back. I think we removed the rear axle. I believe the front axle, I got a, a junkyard axle because the original Scout axle was a closed knuckle axle and I wanted an open knuckle axle. So we found a Dana 44 for the front, Dana 44 for the rear. We did a four link in the rear with coil springs, the front uh, spring over axle, took the motor out of the Scout 2 and I believe it was a 345 did a 345 rebuild, just freshened it up, re-ringed it, um, lapped the valves in the head, uh, put it back together, put a throttle bodied fuel injection system on it with, this was actually the part that made it super cool, with E85 ethanol conversion. So what that allowed us to do is burn basically corn in our Scout. And for anyone who knows Scout history, they're often referred to as corn binders. So that's kind of made it lots of fun. Um, cage, some suspension seats. Oh, and we did a uh, adapter plate on the back of the 345 to connect to a uh, 4L60E, or no, not 4L60E, sorry, just a 700. We did a 700, so no computer needed, into an Atlas transfer case. 37-inch uh, tall tires, I believe they were Mickey Thompson's, on just regular non-beadlock wheels. It was a uh, harvest goldy brown color. Uh, I absolutely loved that truck. Uh, I'm often asked uh, whenever I talk about people, they'll say, hey, do you ever build one uh, that you wish uh, you still had or wh what's the one that got away? 
Uh, that's one of them. There's actually two vehicles that I would like to still add to my personal collection, and that's one of the two. I would love to build another Scout 800A. Uh, I've talked to the guys at uh, IH uh, Parts who come on Ultimate Adventure with us every year, and he has a Scout for me. He keeps telling me it's sitting there, and I need to come get it. Uh, so maybe uh, in the near future, I'll be able to go and get that Scout, bring it down to the shop, and build it. But where is the Scout 800A now? Well, we kept it around the studio for a few years. We actually uh, used it on a couple other uh, field shoots where we just went four-wheeling. We let the film crew use it when we would go out on trips. Uh, we basically just let them use it as basically a crew car to get themselves around different places. So we used it for that a few times. Uh, and then it just basically sat in the warehouse. Originally, I had thought that the former owner of the company, he was in love with it. And I thought he was going to take it uh, to his farm uh, south of Nashville, but he never did. Um, and then one day, uh, we had uh, uh, basically a company that used to come in and just buy a lot of just the leftover parts and stuff. So if you can imagine, uh, when you're making a lot of TV shows and you're building a lot of cars, there's a lot of takeoff parts that come off and sometimes there's just extra parts laying around. We had a company that used to come in and basically buy all that stuff in one shot. So they were in the building basically filling up a semi truck with these parts, these takeoff parts and other parts, and they saw the Scout and they came and talked to me and they said, hey, uh, is, that, is that a is that for sale and it kind of, could we use it? And you think you could use it as my wheeler? And I, and I knew the guy who owned this company and he's still a friend of mine to this day. And I knew that if he got it, he would at least use it. And so when the owners came to me and said, hey, we're thinking of letting him buy that Scout. I said, okay, great, that's fine. Let him buy it, I know it'll at least get used. He took it up to Michigan, uh, wheeled it a bunch up in Michigan for a few years and then eventually sold it. I have been contacted by the new owner through social media a couple times just to show me pictures of it and ask me questions about it. And, but I don't remember, that was a few years ago, honestly. Um, I don't remember where it is. Now, in fairness, when he was going to buy it and also then when he sold it, they both came to me and asked if I wanted it. Unfortunately, at that moment in time, I really wasn't interested in adding another vehicle to my fleet. Uh, right now, if someone came to me and said, hey, do you wanna buy this? Probably, honestly, I think I'd still say no because I would want to just build another one and, and have it just the way I want it. I thought that Scout turned out perfect. There's a few things on it that I would probably change, but not a lot, not a lot. Um, so that's where it is. It's still out being used. Um, if you are the owner of it, go ahead and post in the comments below and let me know that you're the owner. Uh, like I said, uh, the owner has reached out uh, through social media before, uh, but I've just forgotten and I tried to look through my phone to, to find them, but I have so many so many messages and just, it was lost. I even tried searching a couple names that I thought that they were, but, uh, but I was wrong. Uh, so that's where the Scout 800A is right now. It's still out being used on the trails. Now, now we're going to get to the part where I need your help. So as someone pointed out in the YouTube comments, actually a few people pointed out a few times, they said, what are you going to do when you run out of vehicles to talk about in these where is it now segments? And that's actually probably a very good point because right now I've only got two or three more that I can talk about that I know where they are and uh, is an interesting enough project that a lot of you have asked about it. So when I get done those, I've run out of ideas. So what do we do then? Well, here's where you guys can come in and help out. And this was a suggestion from in the comments and I think it's a great suggestion. I want you guys to share your projects with me and then I will share them with you guys. So if you think that you've got a cool project, this is kind of similar to how Stacy David does a what are they working on type of thing. So. Uh, I want you guys to send an email to bigtagarage at gmail.com with three or four pictures of your project, uh, a brief, brief, you know, short store story about it, specs, all that kind of jazz. And then uh, share with me your social media handles. If you have a YouTube channel, send that to me as well. So I can share with the people who watch it. And then what we'll do is we'll basically do a, hey, here's a cool car that somebody sent me to talk about this type of segment. Um, I'm also going to be doing, this came up in social media recently, I'm also going to be giving, in, uh, on times when we're not talking about cars, I'm going to be giving you a what am I watching on YouTube suggestion. Somebody made that suggestion, I thought that was great. Uh, and so if you know of a YouTube channel that you think I should be watching, go ahead, 
email or put it in the comment section below. That'll be better. And that way I can find it. Put it in the comment section below and I'll check out that channel and uh, you know, I'll share with you what I'm watching and what I think is cool. I've already got a few channels already figured out that I'm gonna uh, share with you guys. So that's it for this week. Thank you so much once again for tuning in here in the Big Tire Garage. As always, uh, link to the stickers below if you wanna buy them as well as the patches. We'll see you guys next time here inside the Big Tire Garage.